So you want to put your shift drum mechanism. It's a washer that goes here. You already put a dab of Loctite. So you got to basically line everything up on this end. Starter winding mechanism. You have this half moon piece that has to fit in perfectly there. So, whenever you go ahead and put it in, you gotta make sure that does not fall. A good rule of thumb would be to add a little dab of grease and to make sure it, it, it drops in, but you can always you can also see it. So we're going to wind this past here, also Loctite moment. It'll be a little heavy dash on 
that. I don't have the Kickstarter handy, it's being refinished, so I'm going to just use the channel lock for the moment, light on it. Go extremely light because I don't want to damage the threads. that point. Shaft ceiling bushing that goes down in here. Now, this is important stuff, so I'm going to grab my camera and zoom in for you. So, stand by one second. I have a series of dots here. To make sure your surfaces are clean so you can see these very well. You have on, on your actual shaft, which is going to line up with this one. You're going to be dot to dot here. Sorry for the camera movement. Dot to dot there. And you need to line up your counterbalancer dots. Come on. Give me one second. Hold this for just a second. Just like so. You're going to line up your counterbalancer dots as well. You're also going to be dot to dot. If you do not do this properly, you will have a lot of problems. You're going to either lock up your crankshaft. So you got dot to dot here, splines, dot to dot here. If you don't do that, you will lock up this engine or your crank's going to be hitting your counterbalancer. You're going to have serious issues. I'm going to put this gear on and torque this to spec. This one has no motion, so I'll just torque that to spec and we'll jump back in on the clutch. Right, I just put our kicker gear. A lot of times these teeth wear and cause your kickers to slip. I do a modification where I shave each tooth on the ones that have the problem and get that done. But this one's, this engine was low hour. This thing should be flush or a little bit recessed below the case spin smooth and on 86 models you have a spline. So I'm going to break this down gently. You're going to have 
pushing. Bearing. Bearing. And you start putting your clutch housing. I didn't disassemble this one. This engine was very low hour. We did mostly all of this for a cosmetic rebuild. One thing you want to change on every single engine build is a good practice because it's cheap and it's good assurance is your locks for your clutch nut. locks in, you have a little groove here that this sits in, you can see this just locks in, holds your clutch nut, it's actually a washer, keeper, did not, see how these get all beat up and then just jump, so up on one side, bent up on two sides, and then you are good. So now I do not have my clutch rod in yet. I'm going to slide that in from the other side. Lock it into place. And push rod. This is a new one. I always like to put a little dab of assembly lube on both sides. Make life a little bit easier for everybody. Drop that down. There we go, we're latched. Also new, you get a ball bearing center. Uh, that goes in here. Put a little dab of assembly lube here as well. Two purposes, one it stops it from friction and it also keeps the ball bearing in. So now you can see we got clutch pull. You can put your pressure plates. And these you try to torque by the book. So I'm going to start by hand and we're going to start to spec. You want to do them all in a sequence, go all the way around evenly.
flush cover, flush cover gasket. This I do not put a bit of sealer because it's easy to get on and off on the machine. You don't have to pull the whole engine. And a lot of times you want to do some double checking, clutch adjustments, water pump repairs, whatever you need. So you pretty much just put the cover on and not have any issues. So that being said, I'll grab a gasket, slap it on, close it up. Torque it off camera because not everybody wants to see torquing a bunch of bolts. Now can line up. The water pump shaft, I always line it up, which is perfect. Line it up towards, actually, towards this bushing. That way, whenever you line it up, it just drops right in. You don't have to spin the water pump. You don't have to do any of that fun jazz. And everything just falls right in place. Dial pin lined up in front, dial pin lined up in back. See my gasket slipped a little bit, so I'll leave that a little loose, drop all the bolts in. Two of these are longer. Cover install, simple, the gasket, metal, metal little spacer, gasket, cover, you get four different size, or two different size bolts, too long, too short, so you definitely want to pay attention to that, put them in, definitely long here, short here. Oh, and same thing. Torque to spec. Clutch install, pretty simple. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason on how you can go wrong on this. So you pretty much just put everything in place, bolt it down. If your crankshaft seal is too shallow, it will actually push it down into the right place. Besides that, you just pretty much put this in, target to spec, very simple stuff. Always want to make sure the inside of your flywheel is clean, no shards, no shrapnel, and flywheel key is lined up. Put your washer, flywheel, flywheel nut. Gasket, always check your 
your little bit of uh, your wire here to make sure it's not touching anything. Cover and bolts. These are pretty simple. Top end install. I like to put a little assembly lube on piston pin bearing. A little assembly lube on the piston pin itself. Oh, yeah marks your intake side. We vapor home the original piston. It is like brand new. So we stay in stock board with this particular machine. This is another one of those things that some people do, some people don't. I do I like to put a little gasket sealer, a light, light film on your gasket mating surface for your base gasket. I'm gonna spread it so thin you won't even really know it's there, but if they have a little imperfection somewhere in the housing, it will cover that. I know gaskets are supposed to do what they do, but you always wipe off the excess so we don't get in the combustion chamber. I like to put a little bit of the center case right here. Lettering up. Same thing on the top side. Super light amount, just a film. Like I said, this is something people, some people do it, some people say don't do it. I do it and I feel good about it. I always had good luck with it. So at this point I'm gonna take a little bit of oil, lube the reins. Get the pistons curved a little. You don't want anything dry at startup. And oil is cheap and easy. So, line your piston rings with the correct markings, little notches. Cylinders pre-lubed already. down we're gonna torque the spec we're gonna put the cylinder head gasket torque that to spec and this engine is a wrap um, besides that about the only things I'll have left is putting the reed cage which is right here we use an aftermarket rad valve and that's super simple you put a gasket put it in torque that to spec and uh, cylinder head on put that on target to spec and pretty much we're gonna have a full fully assembled built engine bone stock 
made for a restoration bike which is going to be here so we took it apart do a full inspection on it and that's about it once i talk the top end and our rad valves we are done hope you enjoyed comment for any questions Finished product, 1986 Honda ATC 250R, done. Good for another 35 years, hopefully.